This year's commencement speaker is Dolores Huerta. <laughs> Dolores is president and founder of the Dolores Huerta Foundation. She is a labor leader and community organizer who has worked in civil rights and social justice for over 50 years. In 1962, she and Cesar, Cesar Chavez co-founded the United Farm Workers Union. She served as vice president and played a critical role in many of the union's accomplishments for four decades. In 2002, she received the Puffin Nation Prize for Creative Citizenship, which she used to establish the Dolor Dolores Huerta Foundation. The foundation is connecting groundbreaking community-based organizing to state and national movements to register and educate voters, to advocate for education reform, to bring about infrastructure improvements in low-income communities, to advocate for greater equality for the LGBTQ com community, and to create strong leadership development. She has received numerous other honors, among them the Eleanor Roosevelt Award for Human Rights from President Clinton, and the 2012 uh, award from President Obama bestowed, which was the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian award in the United States. It is my distinct honor and Pitzer's honor to welcome the 2018 commencement speaker, Dolores Huerta. Thank you very much. I am very honored to be able to be with you on this glorious day of your graduation. And uh, I want to thank so many people that are in the audience, the parents, of course, all of you students who worked so hard to arrive to this day, and of course, all of the teachers that are here uh, behind us. Let's give them all a big old viva, okay? <laughs> And uh, because you have come to this incredible, incredible institution here, a lot of what I have to say is just to affirm what you've already learned. And maybe giving you some messages so that you can take them forward uh, in your paths as you go forward in your careers. And also maybe to share them with your parents and families as you go forward. Uh, I know many of you are thinking about what occupations you're going to be going into. I hope some of you will think about going into higher education and you know, continue your studies, and I say that because we are so needful of people like yourselves in higher education. As we look at our world around us today, and we wonder how did we get here to this place in our United States of America, a land of freedom and equality, not quite so, as we know. Well, I do believe that what part, one of the problems is our educational system. And uh, yes, we do have a great structure in the United States for education, uh, but I think that we have to change the content of our educational system. I do believe that one of the reasons that we are where we at, are at today is because we have, still have, unfortunately, a land of abysmal ignorance in our society. <laughs> abysmal ignorance. And one of the reasons is because in our educational system, starting with uh, kindergarten, we were never taught the true history of the United States of America, the Howard Zinn history of the United States of America. We were never taught who our first slaves were in the United States, the Native Americans, whose land we sit on, who we have never thanked or compensated for that the African slaves that were brought here in chains to the United States of America, they are the ones that built the White House and the Congress of the United States of America. And so many of those buildings, that, uh, even Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson's uh, Montebello, you know, the, the, the governor's mansion in, the, in Virginia, 
Thomas Jefferson didn't have to do a lot of work because the slaves did it all, so he could just study and write. And then, of course, all of the immigrants, all of the immigrants that came to our United States, people from Mexico. Mexicans are great, by the way. Give them a big old hand, okay? <laughs> the Mexican immigrants, the Asians, the Japanese, the Chinese, the Filipinos, the people from India, all of these people that came here that really made our country great. And the contributions of labor unions. How did we get the eight-hour day? How did we get the weekend? How did we get uh, social security, unemployment insurance, disability insurance, safety standards, public education? It was from labor unions. And this is not taught. And unless we change the content of our educational system, starting, as I said before, with kindergarten and pre-kindergarten, we will not end the racism in our country, and we will always have, always have the poison, the poison of white privilege and white supremacy. Uh, so we know that this is something that we all have to work on. And we also have to end the bigotry. Not, let's, let's not look down on people who work with, with their hands. Let's remember every time we sit down to eat that a farm worker somewhere out there in the very hot sun of the summer or in the very cold of the winter doing the planting and the pruning, that they are the ones that put the food on our table. Let's remember them. <laughs> And all those millions of people that never had the great opportunity of going to a college, a place like Pitzer, because they never had the opportunities, they are also very educated. They just had, never had the opportunity to go to college. And let's not look down on them, because unfortunately, they did not, they were not as fortunate as we were. We have to eliminate that also. And we know that the one way the one way that we all have to work to make all of this happen is to make sure that we, as we go out there in the world, that we do whatever we can. That we have this great opportunity, we have our diplomas, we have our education, but our task in this world is to make it a better place. Let's not think, I'm just going to go out there and make as much money as I can, because you know what, you can't take it with you. You never see a hearse with a U-Haul on the back of it. <laughs> and I don't care how much money you make, how many millions you have, you can only eat three meals a day. You can only wear one suit of clothes a day. So our task in this world is we know that when we leave this world, we have to make it a better place. We have to leave it in a, in a better place uh, than what we arrived. And we have to fight very hard to see where are our tax dollars going? Are our tax dollars, the money that we spend, is that going to go for more prisons and more jails? In the United States of America, we have more people in prison than any other country in the world. This is shameful. And we know, and we know it takes more money to keep somebody in jail, or as Jesse Jackson says, than to send them to Yale. So we have to end this whole uh, notion that we have of criminalization of our youth. My foundation, the Dolores Huerta Foundation, this is one of the main uh, pr projects that we have is to stop the school to prison pipeline. <laughs> Don't believe what they say that Latino kids are dropping out of school because somehow they have trouble with the English language. What about African-American students? They speak perfect English, okay? But they are being pushed out. They are not dropping out. They are being pushed out of school. In our foundation, we have had to sue our local high school district in Bakersfield, California, because African-American students were being pushed out at 
500% times higher than white kids, Latino kids 400% higher. Today, in a town called California City, up in the Mojave Desert, we are having a parent conference today because in California City, African-American students are being pushed out at the rate of 81%. 81%. This is shameful and it is criminal. This should not be happening in our United States of America. And so we have to look, we have to look at all of our institutions, public and private, and we have to say, what are you going to do to end the racism in our society, the inequity and the imbalance in our society? And I think every educational institution especially has to be tasked and say, how do we increase the number of African-American students at our colleges? How do we increase the number of Latino students at our colleges? And as the Black Panthers used to say, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. <laughs> so when we think of how do we make our country, I mean, our, our country, the United States of America, because we are the richest country in the world, the most influential country in the world. So when we think about what our influences are, we have to realize that we impact everybody. I, I often, when I speak, I like to mention the word bananas. Why are bananas important? Because we eat millions of bananas every day in the United States of America. Do the people in Guatemala or Honduras and El Salvador, do they get the money that we spend on bananas? No, they don't. Who gets the money? Chiquita Banana, Dole, Del Monte, American Banana Companies. So we have to think about how can we influence foreign policy so that we know that our corporations are really acting responsibly. And so when they operate in other countries, that they actually help those countries develop their resources and not take away the resources and bring them to the United States of America. So, I'm talking about a lot of policies that need to be changed in our United States. But I think that we, act, uh, we could actually do this uh, because actually we, the citizens, are the ones that elect the people uh, that make the policies. And I want to quote Coretta Scott King. Coretta Scott King said this, we will never have peace in the world until women take power. But I am going to change that definition. I'm going to amend it. And I'm going to say we will never have peace in the world until feminists take power. So who qualifies as a feminist? Someone who cares about women's reproductive rights? Someone who cares about LGBTQ rights? Someone who cares about the environment? And yes, someone who cares about immigrants' rights. And reminding everyone, unless you're Native American, your people came from somewhere. And to our Latino students, when they say to us, go back where you came from, hey, we have to answer, we are where we came from because we are the indigenous people of the continent. <laughs> so, you know, we're celebrating 50 years. It's interesting, 2018, 50 years when Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated, when Robert F. Kennedy was assassinated. And so I, I've often heard stu many students say, gee, I wish I, I would have been there in the 60s. You know what? We're back. 
We're back, okay? These are the 90s. I mean, the 2000s, okay? We're going to go to 2019. But, uh, and I do hope that all of us working together, that we know that this time, as we know in the 60s, we had a cultural revolution. Maybe this time we will have an economic revolution. Because we cannot sustain the e economic realities that 1% of the United States of America, 1% of the wealthy families own 50% of the wealth. The 10% of our corporate corporations and wealthy families own 90% of the wealth of the United States of America. Somehow we have to go back uh, to indigenous values of sharing, of cooperation, of supporting each other, and not of domination and corporate greed. This we have to change. <laughs> we have to think how can we protect our tax dollars, the tax dollars that we spend to make sure that the resources of our country are shared equally among others. And so people should not have to be homeless. People should not have to pay, work two jobs to be able to pay rents. Th this has to change. And the thing is that we have to remember that we have to change it, that we have the power to change it. And then I want to talk about some basic truths, coming back to the idea, how do we end the racism that is so destructive that ends up with people losing their lives, the people living in poverty, that people do not get the kind of equality education that they deserve. And the basic truth is this. Number one, remember this, 75% of the world are people of color. 75%. And we are only one human race. One human race. Now we're talking some science here, okay? This is science. We are one human race. We have a lot of different nationalities, a lot of different ethnic groups, a lot of different cultures, but one human race. Our human race, the name, as you all know, because you all studied it, is Homo sapien. Homo sapien. So if we're all one human race, and we know that our human race began in Africa. Yes, our human race began in Africa. And we know as our human race traveled across the planet, human race went to Asia, came down to the Bering Strait to the Americas. People kind of lost their color. They got a little lighter skin. One of our human tribes ended up in Europe where it's kind of cold and they lost their color. Now they have to go to the tanning salon or to the beach to get the color back. <laughs> so we can say to David Duke and the KKK, to the White Citizens Council, to the alt-right, to the neo-Nazis, get over it, you're Africans. So, as we remember all of the great people that went before us, as we remember Mahatma Gandhi, who, by the way, celebrates 150 years of his birth this year, about you know, trying to bring peace to the world, bringing truth to the world. And the last words that Robert Kennedy said before he was assassinated, if you can, look at the, at the documentary, Dolores, it's in there, okay? <laughs> you, you can now get it uh, from, from our foundation, the Dolores Huerta Foundation, at DoloresHuerta.org Dolores, Dolores or, or from PBS. But <clears throat> Robert Kennedy said this, just before he was killed, we have an obligation and responsibilities to our fellow citizens. We have an obligation and responsibilities to our fellow citizens. And we can add to that and to our world, and to our planet. So that means that each and every one, we have a huge responsibility, that we have to take our civic responsibilities very seriously. What does that mean? That means, that, number one, we have to vote. 
We have to campaign for progressive people so that they can get elected. Because all of these things that we need to fix, they're not going to happen by themselves. They're not going to happen by themselves. We've got to somehow campaign, go out there, knock on the doors, talk to our neighbors, talk to our relatives, talk to our friends, and please implore them, you have to vote. We cannot have a democracy if people do not vote. Because as Jose Ortega y Gasset said, the Spanish philosopher, if we do not have an educated citizenry, if people do not participate, the greedy and the powerful will govern. The greedy and the powerful will, will govern. So we have to have an educated and an active citizenry. So I implore you, please, 2018, let's remember Robert Kennedy. Let's remember Dr. Martin Luther King. Let's remember Mahatma Gandhi. Let's remember Cesar Chavez, who only had an eighth grade education. And yet, he was very devoted to activism and to the poor and to nonviolence. We can do this. We have it in our hearts and we have it in our power. And when people would ask us, how can you organize the farm workers? They don't speak English. They're not citizens. They're poor. What we would say to the workers is, the power is in your person. The power is in your person. You have the power to make it happen. We have the power to get universal health care. We have the power to get free college tuition for everybody. We have the power to end racism and bigotry and sexism and homophobia. We can do it. But we have to participate and we have to vote. This is what I leave you with. You have had this great opportunity. You now have to become the missionaries. You do have the power to go out there and improve this world. And so I'm going to ask you the question very, very specifically. And I know you know the answer, but I want you to shout the answer so loud so that all of those haters can hear us, okay? <laughs> and the question I'm going to ask you is very simply, who has the power? But wait for me. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you who has the power and please, uh, families and friends, parents, siblings, everybody, join us when we ask this question, when, we ask, when you do the answer to the question, all right? The question is, who has the power? And I want to say, we've got the power. And I'm going to say, what kind of power? I want to say, people power. All right, can we do that? And let's do it really, really loud so the haters can hear us. All right, let's go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> who's got the power? We have the power. What kind of power? So are we going to go out there and organize and engage and campaign and vote? What do we say? ¿Se puede o no se puede? Sí, se puede. Okay, let's all do it with an organized hand clap. Everybody, let's go all together. Let's go. Sí, sí se puede. Sí, se puede. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Thank you.